helping people around the world manifest their deepest dreams. Mm -hmm. Can I just break in here and say, and that's why we're here tonight with them? Right? Yeah, okay. yes. Because we have some deep dreams, yes. and so we're putting them to work. Yeah. We're not saying that's to right. you, Mike, yeah, we see you, and you do all that, come do that with us. <laughs> and this is like a perfect match for us, isn't it? Yes. Can we feel the yes. energetic match that is mm -hmm. perfect? Because the work that he does is the work that we're doing. And so he has some mastery, and we're asking him to share with us so that we can move through with greater intention mm -hmm. and with fewer errors. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Suffice it to say, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah, so we can make a beeline. Mm. So he is the author and creator of the creation frequency, which we're familiar with. It's a project that distills the best lessons he's learned over 30 years of trial and error. What, what some of you, if you've not gone to his website and delved into what he's up to, here's what, what I sense about Mike, is that he has already, in opening his heart, which seems to just stay open, he brings a compassionate presence, a generosity, mm -hmm. an authenticity and a wisdom, all of which, when it comes together in its fully orbed form, we see that he's willing to share whatever it is that he knows that can make a difference. Mm -hmm. Some of that is tied to uh, the fact that he is the founder of the Love from Margot Foundation, which he started in 2012 in honor of his late wife. Margo Murphy, who battled advanced cancer courageously for nine years before she passed away. And the foundation supports underinsured and low-income women suffering from advanced cancer with emergency funds, education, and resources direly needed in their efforts towards healing and recovery. He is imagining justice. is in perfect alignment. We see him imagining justice and making the kind of difference in the meantime. Mm -hmm. As we, we're declaring that all of this is moving, that the needle is moving yeah. in the direction yeah, of righteousness for all people yeah. in all places yeah. at all times. Yeah. And in the meantime, we bridge the gap. Yeah. Does that right. make sense? Yes. Yeah. So, I'm honored. Mike, come on up here. Yeah. So we welcome you in our typical fashion. We just ask you to outstretch your arms. This mic is to symbolize our hearts, our hearts outstretched. This is to symbolize our intention to welcome you into us not just into the building and into heart and soul, but into our very hearts and our very being. And so you say, by repeating after me, welcome, Mike Murphy. Welcome, Mike Murphy. We see you. We see you. We know who you are. We know who you are. We know your work. We know your work. We know your heart. We know your heart. We've seen your love. We've seen your love. We've experienced your generosity. We've experienced your generosity. We love you. We love you. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. And we thank God for you. And we thank God for you. Welcome, Mike Murphy. Welcome. I love, first of all, I felt welcome the minute I walked in this door, to be honest with you. The energy in here is really, really awesome. Um, and during the meditation, I was thinking, you know, what I'm grateful for is just to be here tonight to serve. And my prayer is that I can say something or give you a concept that a light bulb will go off in your mind or a feeling will hit your heart and you'll get something that you can use and go out there and make this a better world where there is justice, where there isn't any today. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's, that's my prayer, and I'm just grateful to be here, and I'm super grateful to find this uh, 
sixth grader here, <laughs> taking notes. And so forgive me if I put a lot of my focus and energy into saying things that will resonate with him because he's our future. Yes, yes, yes. He's our hope. Yes. Now, I'm not sure I would have gotten this in the sixth grade because I was programmed differently than probably how he's being programmed, okay? And we're all programmed. And we're all victims of our own programming and from our parents and our society and the media and on and on and on and on. And that's the problem in the world because we've all been lied to. And uh, I was blessed, uh, at, what are we, 19 now? 1982, I was blessed to meet a mystery man where my life was a total mess. I'm sure there's people in here that can... Um, have had problems in their life, probably when they're younger as well, like me. And I was just very fortunate to find this person and, and taught me how the universe really works and taught me how powerful we really are, okay? We're not born a sinner. I, mean, I don't know what you were doing in there for nine months, but I wasn't in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right? And, and my, and let me interject this right now too. It's a small group, so if any time anybody has a question, you know, stop me, you know, and, and let, let's, let's get something out of this, okay? I'm not here to just talk, and I'm here for you, and that you can get something out of this. And, and um, you know, it's funny, that, that saying, you know, when we change the things, the, we change the way we look, look at, at things, things, the things, things we say change, change, right? So I don't know how long ago, it must have been over 20 years now, I read this amazing book from a, a wonderful man who passed recently by the name of Wayne Dyer. Have you heard of Wayne yeah. Dyer? Yes. Yeah. That's who said it. That's so he wrote a book called, You'll See It When You Believe It. And that's what you guys are about. That's what I'm about. That's what my book, The Creation Frequency, is about. And, and for people that, I, I brought like four copies of my first book called Love Unfiltered and four copies of the Creation Frequency. So whoever asked the best questions, they get it. <laughs> <laughs> right. and, uh, but it's so true, you know? It's so true. When we can imagine, you know, and there's no difference between reality or imagination. Trust me, okay? I could take you all right now to a meditation and put you in a state, okay, to get you to Salivate, if I talk about food, if I talk about sex, I can cause other reactions in you. But because there's no difference, okay? Because we live in an infinite field of possibilities, but we can't see it. So it's hard to believe it until we actually go there and take from there. Because just because we can't see it, we, we, the way we're designed in this body, now you take us out of this body, we're in that field. And right. we're doing whatever we want in that field because that's how powerful we are. Our situation here is we have this spirit, this soul, this heart, this energy, this essence inside of this animal body. You know, Our that's, that's the dilemma. We live in a world of duality. And until we break out of that duality, we get back to our essence, okay? Then we find peace, then we find freedom, then we create miracles, you know, like allegedly Christ did in, in the stories in the Bible. We all have that power. But what do they teach us here is to be victims. Okay? Either all of us are victims or none of us are victims. Pick it. It doesn't matter to me. Because there's no, we're all in this boat together. That's right. And what drives, and I love this title of uh, imagining justice. When, when they told me tonight, I said, well, man, we have to imagine because it doesn't really exist, right? <laughs> there's so much injustice in this world. And it's getting worse and worse and worse. But here's the good news. And but this is very important to hear. It's changing. Yeah. Okay. Yes. If you look at listen, we, we're we're everything's a system. Have you figured that out yet? Mm -hmm. We put us in all these systems. We're born to a family system, in a medical system, and placed into a religious system, and a political system, and a financial system, system, system. And what do we want? Freedom. There's the disconnect from early on. Now. Some people get stuck in that and they play the game. And, and the duality, frankly, is this heart, this soul that is pure, that is singular, and the ego. Mm. And the ego is just a bunch of stories that we use to protect ourselves in the beginning. And then we started to believe them. Yeah. You know? What's, what's your name? Tokosa. Tokosa. Of 
course, I picked Yves' name. <laughs> <laughs> when did you become Tukosa? Um, go ahead. Well, I changed my name. Okay. What was your original name? Daryl. Well, when did you become Daryl? I guess the day I was born. Everybody answers it that way. <laughs> but in reality, you didn't know who the hell you were. Okay? You were this perfect little infant. Okay? Perfect in every single way. And then they started calling you Daryl, okay? And Daryl do this. No, Daryl. Yes, Daryl. Come here, Daryl, okay? And then about two or three, you look in the mirror and you go, oh, I'm Daryl. <laughs> That's where the story began. And your story is based on who you ra who raised you, what your environment was. We're all victims of our environment, okay? My story is different than yours because I would grow in a different environment. It's that simple, you know? I mean, I could have been born in Palestine, and same soul, different body, in Palestine, whole different story. Right. But it's just a story. I saw somewhere up here earlier, we can change the story. It's just a bunch of stories. You know, uh, who's heard of Tony Robbins? Okay, if you listen to Tony Robbins speak, here's what he says. I'll clean up his language a little bit. Because he, <laughs> right. he, goes, he goes, I created this MF for Tony Robbins. <laughs> he created that person, okay? Because he said, who do I want to be? And then he found people, if he wasn't sure, he found people that he wanted to be like, and he modeled them, and he became Tony Robbins. Now, we can't all be Tony Robbins. We don't want to be Tony Robbins. I want to be Mike Murphy. You want to be Daryl, and now your new name, and I applaud you for changing that. I love that. And because... The truth is, we are powerful beyond our belief. We can't even comprehend, comprehend how powerful we are. But we get stuck in this thinking thing here because we leave this, our heart, our truth, our essence, our soul, and we get stuck up in here. What lives up here? Fear. Okay? Anybody can control this. All we got to do is go turn on the TV tonight, and you want to drive yourself nuts? I promise I can drive anybody in this room insane in 30 days. <laughs> Every night... For 30 days, you watch an hour of Rachel Maddow, and then you watch an hour of Sean Hannity. Okay? And then you try to tell me what the truth is. Okay? The truth is so subjective because we all have our own truths. Okay? And another thing I saw up here that uh, what the duality does is creates judgment. You want to live in freedom and peace? Eliminate the judgment. Okay? You want to imagine justice, eliminate the judgment. Now, we need to be observant. We need to be aware. We need to be conscious. But I don't need to judge people. There's no way I can judge anybody in this room their heart. You know? I might be able to judge it based on an experience I had with you. But that's just the experience, the act. It's got nothing to do with the heart and the soul. You know? Uh, anybody heard of the teacher, spiritual teacher Byron Katie? Yeah. Okay. I love this woman. Okay? And here's what she says. She says, the worst thing that any of us can be ever found guilty of is believing a thought that's not true. Mm. That's all that's going on here, folks. Everything else is an illusion. You know? It's just one big illusion. You start to study uh, quantum physics mm, right, and you right, understand right. what's going on. Um, it's mind blowing. Yeah. And so when you tap into that energy, that vibration, that frequency, you change your life. And once we change our life, now we can start changing those around us. And once we start changing around those, then what we need to do in this world today, which is these systems are breaking down, they're being exposed. Um, we're, we're switching gears. And I believe that this happens periodic, periodically throughout humanity. We go in cycles. In the last how many years, thousand or two thousand, whatever it's been, we've been in a masculine energy. What is masculine energy? It's domination, it's penetration, it's control. And thank God we're moving to a maternal instinct, to, yeah. a, to a feminine energy. Thank God. What is that? Nurturing, loving, inviting. That's how we're going to fix this place. But here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen. When this breaks, and it's getting ready to break, okay, it's going to be ugly. Ugly, ugly, ugly. Financially, there's going to be all kinds of messes. You know, and right here, we're, you know, I've been in Oakland now, my business for 24 years, okay? I've seen a lot of changes here in Oakland. When I was driving here today, 
You know, you go through under every overpass, man. There are yeah. souls out there yeah. suffering, yeah. believing stuff that's not yeah. true. Yeah. They have the power to change that like that, but they can never find it. Mm -hmm. They're lost, mm -hmm. you know? And, and so <laughs> what we can do is pray and try to help in any way that we can. You know, uh, if we have money, we can help that way. If we have intelligence, we can help that way. If we have a heart, we can have that way. We can just smile. We can be kind. We can be compassionate. And we can pray. Because when we pray, we reach that field of infinite possibilities. We reach the creator. Whatever that is. Whatever that looks like. Okay? And that's, we all got our own opinion on that. Right? I mean, these religions where there's only one way drive me crazy. Okay? There's, not, there's a million ways to God. Because God is in here. Okay? We are God, a part of God is put in here. That's the deal. And that's our conscious. That's our heart. But man, we can get so far away from that. And that's how we fill these prisons up. That's how we fill these uh, uh, underpasses up with homeless people. And drugs and alcohol. And before I, first of all, how many of you have read the book, The Creation Frequency? Just, okay. So I'm not going to get a lot into that. Okay. Well, I would like questions on that and how you can better manifest, better write intentions. I'd love to do some work around that. Remind me again, we're going until 7.30? Yeah. Or is that what you told me, 7.30? 7.30, 7.45. 7.45, okay. Um, but here's one thing that I've really been working on in my life lately, and, um, and I think we can all benefit from this uh, stuff I'm studying right now. We gotta watch what we put into our body, huh. okay? Man! I'm telling you, and what we got to do is we got to drink good, pure water, okay, without all the fluoride and out all the chemicals and, you know, whatever you got to do to find some distilled water and drink it out of glass. Man, we're 70% water. The planet's 70% water. We, we got to put good water. Our cells need good water because the better you feel, the better you do. But we also need to eat live foods. Okay, yep. eating these dead animals, man, I'll tell you, I, I do it, okay, but I'm changing. I've decided i got to change because I need more energy for what's coming. Yeah. I need to jump out of that bed every day. I don't need to get out, and I'm getting old, okay, and i got aches and pain. I need to fix it, and I've done this before. This is why I'm so excited to do it again. I've done it before, and I 30 days of juicing, fresh vegetable juice, and plant-based diet, all the aches and pains in my body went away. Fat that never would go away, no matter what I did, I could run 18 marathons and still be there, would disappear, melted. We got to take care of this thing yeah, here yeah. because yeah. this houses who we really are our essence, our soul, our power. So, this is something I've been working on in my life just lately uh, to get back at it. It's not the things I've done before. But now, and the reason I'm doing this is because the Love for Margo Foundation, who uh, I'll get into that in a minute, but it's a foundation that was, we were work, I was working with women in Oakland um, that have cancer, mm -hmm. and they don't have much hope, okay? It's sad. It broke my heart. I must have worked one-on-one -on -one, um, with over 250 women in this society here, all with cancer. Very few, if any, had any financial support. Most of them were grandmothers raising their grandkids because their kid is off doing drugs. You talk about heartbreaking. And they, and they don't feel comfortable really. One thing I learned about cancer patients, and my wife, we dealt with it for nine years, is they always feel like they're a burden to others, you know? And they don't want to be a burden. So anyways, long story short, I got tired of giving money to people so they could get sicker and sicker and die. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just demoralizing to me. So then I said, okay, how can I help? So then I started giving them water purifiers, giving them vegetables, giving them juicers, mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. Now I became like their doctor, and I'm not qualified for that. And, and it was just, that became overwhelming. Mm -hmm. So long story short, I, I bought a 20-acre farm in Medellin, Colombia. And we're building a healing center there using juicing and using reprogramming the mind and moving from the head to the heart where real healing can take place. And so that's and so we'll charge people with money and then we'll give scholarships to the women that come to the Love for Marco Foundation. Instead of just paying their PG and E bill so they can die warm, we're gonna take them somewhere where they can heal 
naturally. It's unbelievable. Yeah. So in building this thing, you know, I'm studying, studying, studying. Oh, it's just young man. Um, I was just wondering, for with the society, or with so many people blinded by what's on like this, like realm. What do you like? What are the, like the steps to like changing from your head to your heart? Mm. With first of all, that around you. I love it. So first of all, you can only. There's three types of business in the world, okay? God's business, your business, and my business. And the only business I can control is my business, okay? So that's an important thing to know for you, young man. So, so this is a question for you, so I'm going to answer it for you. You're already aware and conscious, okay? So what you need to do is read good books and learn. Mm -hmm. Education is power. Knowledge is power. Leaders are readers. Okay, and you're going to lead something great someday in the near future. So you need to read great books, spiritual books, how-to books, books on health, books on nutrition, and then, I saw this word up here earlier too, discernment. Because guess what the powers to be do? They'll take a book that they'll create, and it'll be 80% truth and 20% BS that's going to derail you for the rest of your life. So we have to be discerned. So how do we discern? We don't think. We see how it feels. There was a great, great saying, you know, I forget who the, the, they credit this uh, slogan with, but he said, I think, so therefore I am. Descartes. Who was it? Descartes. Descartes. So I say BS. I feel. <laughs> I feel. Yes. So therefore I am. Yes. I'm sorry, what was your name at the end? Ivan. Ivan. You've got to feel your way through your life. Yes. And you know why people don't do that? Because it hurts. Okay? It hurts. I saw another thing about um, working with the collective consciousness, right? Okay, so there's my consciousness, there's your consciousness, and then ours are collective consciousness. So sometimes you can be flying high. You're, you're dialed in, you're congruent, you're doing the right thing, you're, you're, your bad habits are over here, you're living a great life, everything. And you wake up and you're depressed, or you're mm -hmm. sad, or you're lonely. Because there's this great big collective consciousness. There's this energy out there. Who's familiar with Eckhart Tolle, Power of Now? Yes. Great book. If you can comprehend that book, you're going to go a long way. <laughs> I had to read a million times. So, and then I had to listen to him on tape, and then that's how I fall asleep. So. <laughs> but no greater book I've ever read. And so when he talks in that, he talks about a pain body, mm -hmm. but there's a collective pain body, because there's only one energy, you guys, right. one energy, mm -hmm. and there's, we're all connected to that energy, we just can't see it. The Chinese call it chi, the Indians call it prana, Tesla called it plasma, and the Bible calls it ether. Mm -hmm. And so this energy is what holds together atoms, because that's what's all, all we are here is atoms. But with electro, a nu a nucleus and electrons, it's, and atoms are 99% space. So the illusion is this solidity. Yeah. Yeah. It's not. There's a cave in India where some guy meditated for 30 years and literally solid rock wall in this cave pushed his hand in over a foot because he knew what I just said. Right. Now it took him 30 years. But, uh, <laughs> I don't know. He might have done it first day. I really don't know. But, but, but if you study the power of these, especially these Indian gurus, deep meditators, you know, they literally can go and sit in a, in a foot of snow and warm their body that it melts the snow in a six-foot circle. They can lower, you know, they say there's, I read a great book that Jesus lived in India uh, after he died. He, they took him off the cross. And because he, so Jesus, when he was two, he had to flee. So he went to India, allegedly, through this book. And then he came back, he turned water into wine when he was about 12 or 13. And then he disappeared until he was 30. He went back to India. He became a guru. Okay? <laughs> so when he was on the cross, most people, when they hang him on the cross, they, let, they keep him up there two or three days. Okay? Let him suffer and make an example, right? They got him down in three, three hours because he was able to pretend that he was dead. 
because he can meditate so deep. Wow. This is just this book, right? I'm not saying it's gospel, but I'm just, <laughs> I, I tend to believe it, but I mean, it's right. But, and then the other thing is the, the Bible story, they, they took a sponge and they dipped it in something sour, but I actually believe that was some sort of opiate. And they were able to almost put his heart down to nothing. So they were able to get him off the cross in three hours, wrap him in that shroud and put him in that cave, and, and he went on and lived the rest of his life in India. In Kashmir, mm -hmm. India, or Pakistan, whatever it is, there's actually a, a tomb that they, they guard 24-7 that they say he's buried in, and there's also a uh, cement kind of mold of his feet with the holes where the nails are. So there you have it. The book is called Jesus Lived in India. Whether it's true or not, I don't know. But there's a lot of proof. It, it sold me. It was written good enough to sell me, and I've read other things about it. Um, so I don't know why I brought all that up, but there must have been a <laughs> So that's going to show you, man, but we need to move from here to here. And once we're aware of that, you're going to get stuck here. Trust me, okay? You're gonna, I got bad news for you. You're going to run and think all girls. Have you done that? <laughs> you met any girls in your life yet? Oh, thank God. Okay, stay away from those. Until you're 18, at least. Because that, because you, you, Man, life is difficult. You know, I read a book once, uh, The Road Less Traveled. Yeah, 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 yeah. Scott, okay. Richard Stell Scott or something. Right, right. And the opening line of that book is, life is hard. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> no one told me that when I was growing up. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you, I, so I live in Medellin, Colombia, half the time. And I was there working with this young man, young man, like 25, but came from a very wealthy family. But his father wasn't wealthy. His grandfather was, and he got divorced, so he was no longer wealthy. <laughs> But, so I said, hey, I'm working with Sam to, to help him get a car here. Because it, everybody rides motorcycles there. It's, I mean, there's got to be three or four deaths every day for these guys riding motorcycles. Okay? He goes, he goes well, why would you want to do that? I go, well, because they're dangerous. He goes, life is dangerous. <laughs> See, here in America, okay, we, we, we lost our soul. Okay? We, we, we think everything should be easy. And, you know, I call it the microwave society. I'm hungry, I take something out of the refrigerator, I take it my way, I eat. Well, that's not how it works normally, okay? You know, you've got to prepare. That's why we're all sick, and we have all this inflammation in our body, because we eat all that processed food, and we eat all those dead animals, and we're all suffering. And, and when you can fix this, 50 trillion individual living conscious cells, 50 trillion, okay? And I think it's 10 million die every second, and 10 million come into play every second, okay? So people don't like change. I say, you can change or change in every second. Okay? <laughs> so, but we're not conscious of it. When you get really conscious of it, I believe that we can heal ourselves with this and this and good nutrition, okay? Uh, there was a guy, um, I don't know if you're familiar with this guy. I love this man, uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza. Heard of yeah. him? Yeah. Okay. Broke almost every bone in his back, right? And they wanted to put a rod all the way down it, okay, steel rod. And he's laying, he can't move, he's laying there face down. And he goes, I don't think I want to do that. <laughs> and I don't blame him. That's scary, right? And there's no guarantee he'll ever walk after that. And he goes, no, I'm going to rebuild my back with my mind. And I think it was up to maybe three weeks or more until he could go into a meditative state and rebuild every broken bed of vertebrae piece by piece by piece without breaking his concentration. It took him three weeks before he could go down the whole back. And I think the guy was training again like in nine months. I mean, it's unbelievable. So all this, and here's the beautiful thing about the world today, young man. Everything is free on YouTube, okay? Or Google, okay? You know, I say if you're stupid today, you're really stupid, because all you got to do is do it. <laughs> You know, back in the day, you had to ask God and wait for an answer. <laughs> Sometimes it wasn't crystal clear. Now you can Google it, there it is. So I love it. I love it. So, what, what, please. So, um, piggybacking on what you had said about yeah. kind of shaking from head to heart, so if you're vibing at a lower frequency, to get to the higher frequency, there's different schools of thoughts about whether you should feel through the low vibration, otherwise you'd be repressing the other stuff, or is it better just to shift? Can wow. you repeat what you said? Yeah. Could you say that a little louder? Stand up, stand up, please, thank you. What's your name? Yun. 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 So, so, um, here we go, here's the microphone, perfect. Mm -hmm. So you said that you're vibrating at a higher frequency, and you're trying to get to the higher frequency, 
and you want to get to the higher frequency. I was wondering if Mike thinks it's better to move, like feel through the lower frequency to kind of slowly move up, or just do a quantum shift, because there's different schools of thoughts about which mode is better, since I imagine in working with cancer patients, a lot of people have a lot of repressed emotions and thoughts and so forth. What do, you think? what do you think? Mm -hmm. I would prefer to make a quantum shift. Absolutely. Yeah. Why suffer if you don't have to? Mm -hmm. and, and speaking of these cancer patients, and, and you know, like I said, I, I, the biggest blessing of my life was falling in love with a woman. And I'll be honest with you, the day I met her, she'd been married two months. The day I met her, I was 43 years old, I married my wife twice. I had four beautiful kids. I had a 10,000 square foot home. I had all the money I could ever want. My life was perfect. She walked into my dealership to sell me advertising on Telemundo. There was an immediate connection. For seven months, we worked together. She was falling in love with me. I didn't know it. I was falling in love with her. She didn't know it. One day, we compared notes. <laughs> <laughs> and we created a lot of drama. The biggest mistake of my life is when I asked for separation, I didn't tell the truth, okay? If I would have gone home and said, I fell in love with someone else and I have to go, that would have been so powerful. But no, I took the chicken way out. I need some time alone. What a bunch of BS. So that I paid the price for that with, my, with both women, and so did she, by the way, because she did the same thing with her husband. Okay, because we thought we were so brilliant, we would find a way to be together without hurting anybody. Well, that doesn't happen. Okay, so we paid a terrible price for that, and and perhaps that led to some of her cancer. But you know, nine we started our relationship, and nine months into the relationship, um, I find a stage three breast a tumor in her breast, and so we spent the nine we weren't even, I was just her boyfriend at the time, you know, and and we spent the, we eventually got married, and then. She eventually passed away. But the why I bring her up is because that woman changed everything about me, that experience. Because I got, I was blessed, and, and I have a book about this that hasn't been published yet, but if, if it ever is, I hope you read it. Because it, to me, it's the most powerful book in the world. Because, because I got to watch a woman 15 years younger than me transcend suffering and then transcend death right before my very eyes. Nine years, she never once complained. So many brutal surgeries. At the end of her life, it's so December 1st, 2010, the doctor said, Margo, unfortunately, and I love these doctors. I read all these reports. It's always unfortunately. Oh my God. What a weak word for a dire situation. Unfortunately. Yeah. Unfortunately, the warrior lost yesterday. <laughs> so, but said, unfortunately, the cancer spread to the lining of your brain and to your cerebral spinal fluid. Without treatment, you have six weeks to live, and with treatment, you have six months to live. Yeah. We never say anything. She just started fighting it and preparing to, for the worst outcome. And I just did whatever I could to support her in that. But for nine years, she never once complained, never once asked why me. And in those six months, I mean, literally, just, I can't even, you, it would blow your mind. I mean, they had, to, you know, they put a port here for chemo, right? Okay, with a uh, cancer patient. But they put one here, an electronic one, and she had to go surgery and put a port here so they could drip chemo to her cerebral spinal fluid. Never once complained. Never once asked, why me? And was worried about other people this entire time. And when she took that last breath, so much love, so much peace. Now, not for us. For those that are left behind, it's gut-wrenching, you know? I always say dying is easy. Being left behind is a difficult one. I can't wait to get out of this animal body, okay, and be free. But I'm in it, and there must be a purpose, so I need to find that purpose and live that purpose, so that when I am out of here, whatever dimension I end up in is gonna be better than this one. And I'm not gonna tell you what I was thinking because it's so overwhelming. So powerful, but but that's what's available for all of us. And now to be able to live that way in this body, not all the time, but just to experience in glimpses, to have that peace that passes all understanding, that joy, that being sync, being synchronicity, 
You know, um, speaking of Wayne Dyer, right? So uh, I, I, I read all his books. I mean, I just love the guy. I watched all his PBS specials, listened to his, I can't tell you how many his CDs I listened to. And so anyways, five, six years ago, a friend of mine is headed to Hawaii, Maui, and I happen to know Wayne Dyer lives there. And go, listen, and I'm texting him. And I'm in the tar on a plane, Southwest flight, flying to LA to Oakland, on the tarmac, I text him. Because he texts me, he said, hey, I'm going off to Hawaii, blah, blah, blah. I go, listen, while you're there, you're going to meet a man. He's bald. He sometimes wears a black beret. He swims in the ocean every morning. He's 72 years old. You're going to meet him. And this man, uh, sister-in-law was named Amanda, and she had breast cancer. She's the one that inspired me to start the foundation after my wife passed. And I said, you're going to meet this man. I want you to tell him about Margo. I want you to tell him about Amanda, and I want you to ask him to call me. Okay? You talk about manifestation. Three days later, I'm eating in a restaurant in Palm Springs with a couple of buddies, and I get this call. Hello? Hi, this is Wayne Dyer. <laughs> That's the power we have when we're tuned in, when we're congruent, when the left brain, right brain are congruent with the heart and the soul, and now what I'm really focusing on, the physical body, this temple, we need to treat it like a temple, okay? okay. With good food, good water, breath work, and love. What does the world need? Love. Who does it need to love? Ourselves. There's the dilemma. We're not taught that. We're not taught about nutrition. We're not taught to love ourselves. We're not taught about relationships. We're not taught to how to treat a woman if we're a male. We're not treat a, a, a male if we're a woman. We're, we're taught all kinds of crazy religions that don't serve anybody but the people running the religion. <laughs> okay? right. And we're, we have all these governments controlling us, taxing the heck out of us. Okay, and then taking that and abusing us. Yes. And that's why the system is breaking right before our very eyes. Unfortunately, America is breaking really badly. And, then, and because we have so much debt. That's why you guys have to prepare for what's coming. Whatever that looks like for you, just have a little extra of this and a little extra of that and a little plan B, you know, when, if things get difficult, because they very well could. Um, and I don't mean to frighten anybody. I just want to just, as my heart says to say that, right? Um, because that's what I'm doing. And if I'm doing it, then I think everybody should do it. But, but I just really care about people. And I care about eliminating suffering. You know, uh, if you talk to Byron Katie, she'll say, suffering isn't even real. It's just believing thoughts that aren't true, right? So then you, she'll say, well, why do you do what you do? Why do you work so hard to help others? Because as long as one person thinks they're suffering, I got a job to do. We need our job is to eliminate suffering. And to eliminate suffering, you gotta lose this story, create one that serves this. Okay. You know, man, I was I was I was taught that you know to be a good man, okay, you gotta be a womanizer, you gotta drink, you gotta gamble, you know, that's the environment I grew up in. And you gotta make a lot of money. Nothing could be further than the truth, especially chasing the money. Money does not make you happy, never, ever. I'll tell you what will make you happy is eating plant-based food and drinking <laughs> great water, okay? Taking great walks, maybe having an animal that you can love and walk yes, every morning yes. and night, okay? <laughs> having a great relationship with as many people as you can, okay? They don't have to all be sexual, okay? I'm not advocating that. But I'm talking about relationship. Right, right. Where you hear me and I hear you. Yes. Yes. Where you serve me and I serve you. Yes. Yes. This is where the power is. Mm -hmm. And this is why this is why when this breaks, that's what's gonna happen. Every time there's a tragedy in the world, man, human beings in one level are the most loving, beautiful, biggest, hardest people in the world. And at the same time, it's the only animal that preys on one another. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? And in so many ways of manipulation. And so many, so much injustice in the world. There's a quote from Martin Luther King that, that I'll screw up right now, but, but it's really, you know, whenever there's any injustice in the world, he's called to go there and write that justice. Anybody know the quote, by the way? I, I know I don't shoot it, but, but there's a great quote by him. Oh, yes, I know. Uh, um, I, I just have a, a quick question. Yes, please. Um, and Here's that's, Mike Rucker, my 
So I have a quick question, and the question is, it's just a clarifying question. So what I got from what you were saying is being in sync with the creation frequency means that you have the power to create the energy in sync, the frequency of change and shifting, the way you look at things to see different outcomes. Absolutely. That's pretty much what we meditated on, right? That's pretty much what, what we meditated on is pretty much what that says. So let's talk about this frequency. You brought it up too. Um, so there's different types of frequency, right? There's my physical frequency, my physical energy, okay? So we t I talked about that, how we have to take care of these 50 trillion living individual conscious cells that hear everything we think, say, do. Okay, they're subjected to all of us. They're working together to create this vessel called a human body where we can live, our true self can live. But then there's the mental aspect. And we need to guard what goes into this. You know, especially in today's world with the internet and everything. Man, there's a lot of stuff that we can get messed up with out there. Okay, so we've got to guard this. And we've got to guard this. So we've got to guard our thoughts. We gotta guard our feelings, feelings, and we gotta take care of the best. And when we do that, we have to understand how the mind works a little bit with the left brain and the right brain. That one we're optimal. Now you're gonna, if you get into this state, you're vibrating at such a high frequency. The power of what the mystery man taught me is now I create an intention. And I see it how it exists already, even though it I tell my subconscious mind it already exists because there's no difference between imagination and reality. King Solomon said there's nothing new under the sun because everything is in this field. It already exists. You already existed. Everything already existed. Okay? It's all right there. So whatever it is you want to do with your life and, and, the, and the more love that you can attach to it because that's the highest frequency, then you just pull it out of this cloud, okay, by, by, you know, what he taught me is, first you write it as clear as you can, but you don't write it in stone, you write it in pencil, because it, it's going to change a few times, okay, and that's good, because you're co-creating with the creator that created all of this. Now, I'd much rather have a partner like that, that already built this thing, okay, because I'm, here's how I look at us. If we go out to the Pacific Ocean, it's full of what? Water molecules, okay? So let's call this 7.3 billion human beings, individuals, okay? And I can let go of my story and my ego and be one with all, just like a water molecule can, become the ocean, or I can be this little individual water molecule in that big ocean and get thrown all over the place and have no life. I say let go. Trust God, trust your creator, whatever you call that, whatever that is for you. Trust yourself because you've given yourself so much self-love that it just pours out of you. And then things show up. Things just show up. I'm not here by accident. You know, I walked into my car dealership a month or two ago and, and met this young woman I didn't even know in my life that worked there and said something about my book and, and her aunt and this church and or this fellowship. And here I am. This yeah. wasn't by accident, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, it started when I had the desire to write the book. Yes, ma'am. So, about collective consciousness, mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you're familiar with the 100 Monkey story. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, what I'm seeing in the atmosphere around shift and change, um, around uh, what's happening in society around the world, especially with uh, the, the climate crisis, yeah. especially with the activism of Generation Z, and also the awareness that's being brought to forward in terms of where we are with the planet. What can we do as a collective to shift that collective consciousness to refocus and to transmute some of the older paradigms? Um, I, I, I'm optimistic on, on the activism and the change that's happening, but in your perspective from a frequency level, what do we need to do to raise the frequency to get the urgency and the activism to collectively shift old paradigms? So I'm going to give you a one word answer that's not going to sound right and then I'll elaborate, okay? Nothing. 
Nothing we can do to affect that collective conscious. All we can do is affect our own personal consciousness and let that spread. Mm. Be a be a, be light. You know, when you eat this plant-based food, it's uh, it's bio photons. It's light. So the light that makes that plant grow goes into that plant, and if you cut that plant and you eat it, all that light energy goes into you. And these cells, these individual cells, they're doing a hundred thousand. Um, chemical reactions in less than a second. So you have 50 trillion cells with 100,000 chemical reactions because of this light energy, and you're just going to shine. You know when Christ went and allegedly went and fasted for 40 days? He became light energy, translucent. They say that when he, when he got out of here, he was just pure light. That's what we need to become. Because when you become that, you're, everybody's going to be attracted to you. Then they're going to hear about what, you, what your concerns are, and then they're going to wake up. It's about waking each other up, yeah, yeah. In, my, in my opinion right now. And because uh, the most Americans especially are sound asleep. Okay? Mm -hmm. And they're so busy getting their, their, their 15 seconds of fame with they got 20 likes on their latest post, Facebook post, right? And that releases dopamine. Okay, which makes them feel good. But that's not a life. Okay, that's a waste of a life, wasted time, wasted time. We all fell into the trap. I did. You know, I thought it was a great thing to, you know, to, to sell my books or whatever. Um, and now I just can't stand it anymore. You know, <laughs> because, uh, boy. And so, so if you affect yourself, and then you're going to affect the people around of you. Let me put it to you in a story, that's my favorite story. There's a young man, about his age, I his age, walking along the beach. Okay? And up on here on the bluff, there's an old man about my age. <laughs> okay? So I'm down here and I'm up there. Now, I'm walking and watching him. And every 10 feet or so, he bends down, he picks something, he throws it into the ocean. And I'm going, what is this kid doing? And then we're going for like a mile walk here, and now we're converging at the, at the pier. I say, kid, what are you doing? He goes, well, these starfish got walked, washed up on the shore, and I'm trying to throw them back into the ocean so they can live. I go, dude, there's like millions of them. You know, you're, you're walking by 50 to throw one in. You're not making a difference. He looks at me. He bends over, <laughs> throws it in the ocean. I made a difference for that one. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all we can do, folks. That's all we, I get so frustrated. You know, I know so much stuff, and my kids think I'm crazy. Okay? And, and that's okay. Okay? That's okay. But a lot of people say, yeah, that's helped me. Yes, thank you. That resonates with me. Yeah, I want to be a part of that. And that's what will happen to you. So you need to control you. There's three types of business. You need to control you and then shine that light. Yeah, yeah. Trust yourself. That's Take good. your power. Own your power. <laughs> love yourself. Man, we gotta love ourselves. Yeah. God, yeah, I don't yeah. know about you guys, but I got a committee up here that just wants to destroy me. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> no matter what I do. Yeah. Why'd you say that? Why'd you do that? What are you doing? Why are you doing that? <laughs> Whoa. We got to turn this off. Because in here, you know what? I feel, I feel your love, I feel my love, I feel my creator's love, I feel my kids' love, I feel my dog's love, I feel my wife's love. In which state do I want to live in? Love or craziness? <laughs> yeah. We at the dealership we have a some of you guys, most of you guys probably live around here, right? Yep. Yeah. You might know this gal. Um, so she's literally uh, adopted us and and so she's one of these ladies that, you know, walks up and down just yelling and screaming and talking to people that aren't there. Okay? Well, I'm doing the same thing. It's just not coming out of my mouth. So who's crazy? <laughs> right? <laughs> so, so that's why, that's why uh, I think she adopted us, because she fits right in. And uh, I'll tell you another story. There used to be a guy... His name was Car Wash, homeless guy, Car Wash. I'm going back 15 years from now. And you know, always like, you know, especially in the winter, it gets dark at five, it's cold, it's wet, it's windy. 
And uh, he'd always come into the dealership about 5 o'clock and sit in the waiting room and watch TV. And he didn't smell all that great, to be honest with you. And, you know, we're, we got customers and we got this. And I, I was having the biggest struggle, right? Man, I don't want to throw this guy out, but I mean, it's just, what should I do? Why don't you talk to him? Hey, car wash. What's up? Man, I'm cold. I go, okay. I'll be right back. I run down to Sears. There used to be a Sears. Right. Now there's an expensive vacant Uber building. <laughs> and I buy him a tent and a sleeping bag. I say, hey, man, here you go. I go, what, what's your story anyways? He goes, well, I used to be a cameraman at Channel 2 down at Jack London Square. And I worked nights and was married, two kids. And my wife was having an affair, and they were smoking crack, and they burnt the house down and killed my kids. And I couldn't handle it. See, we all have a story, and but we judge people, okay? We judge people without knowing what's behind that. And that drives me crazy. And I do it too. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I can get in a state where, you know, you can push a button. That's why... This kid here, he hasn't been programmed like we have, okay? Some of them have been programmed really bad. Some of them have been programmed really, really bad. And it's easy to push those buttons. Because until we understand how this works, when we understand how it works, we can erase it. And we can create new neural pathways, new programs of what it is we truly want. And that's what we all got to do. We got to do a little work. Yes, ma'am. I love these questions, by the way. Someone has to keep track of the good ones so they get the free cash. <laughs> So my question is a little practical, I guess. Oh, good. Um, and but we're talking about frequency yeah. and you know the things that we're kind of envisioning and what we want. So just on a personal level, and when we're talking about programming, when I think about the impact I want to create in the world or where I want to be, what what um, would help me along the path of creating, you know, the change that I want to see in the world, it's going to come through as things that cost money. All right. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know. Yes. No matter if I'm looking at a retreat center for my community or if I'm looking at mentorship and a community that I want to be involved in and get guided by, right? And so I'm thinking of, and I'm just thinking personally, literally, because I was like, I'm going to Mike Murphy. I'm going to ask him this question. <laughs> so, um, so, and I'm thinking literally about myself praying to be in different communities and having different mentorship and being guided to kind of create the change. Well, it comes to me, and I'm like, oh my God, this is exactly, this is what I need. And it's like, oh yeah, this is 2,000 a month. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't quite get the frequency of that, <laughs> you know? <laughs> right, so I guess that's my, you know, when you envision, when you're there and you feel it and it comes, except I'm like, so I'm, got, I'm at the frequency to receive this thing that I need, however, I don't quite have the frequency of what it takes to get it, right? You know? Well, no. What does you, that you mean? No, you think you know. Okay. Okay, good. Thank you. So that's my other question because then I get an email saying, so I see you can't come here, but guess what? I'm going to gift you with this retreat anyway. So now I'm completely confused. About what? <laughs> you know, well, because I'm like, all right, I'm, I, this is the frequency. This is what... Uh, this is where I am. This is the flow that I found myself into. And so does that mean I get a piece of it? Or I just need to find out what is the whole amount of frequency? Do you get what I'm I, saying? I totally get what you're saying. Yes, of course so I, I do. If I'm describing it the right way. You're doing it really well. And what I hear is a lot of confusion. Yeah. What was your name? Keisha. Keisha. Nice to meet you. So, yeah, money. Damn. Programming that goes with it. <laughs> well, there's some really bad programming, okay? We're saving money for a rainy day and all these other things they teach us. Here, let, let, one, let me tell you my real life experience, okay, with the mystery man. So, this is the one that happened the fastest, by the way. One of my six intentions that I wrote with him was to own my own business. Now, I had no credit but bad credit. I had no money but a negative net worth. And I wanted to own my own restaurant. And I was crystal clear on that. But that takes money, right? But I'd written this intention. Have you written any intentions around what you want? Okay. I have an app on my phone. 
Okay. Okay. So, so you got to do a little work. And I promise you, you do work, something beautiful is going to come out of it. There is no free lunch, ladies and gentlemen. There's one thing they've ruined us in America. Okay. All this welfare and all this unemployment insurance and all this stuff. No, 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 no. We got to work. Okay. That's, you know, you got to plant a seed before you get the crop. Okay. The seed doesn't plant itself. So, I want to know my business. So, I'm listening to this cassette tape every night, every morning, blah, blah, blah. And now there's a restaurant that closed down five minutes from where I was living. Three other people have failed already. But it was a chicken restaurant. I used to work for Foster Farms. Okay? Boom. Here's my opportunity. I used to work for Foster Farms restaurant. Here's this. I just don't have the money. But out of nowhere, or maybe out of the field of infinite possibility, <laughs> came the thought, put an ad in the newspaper and raise the money. Okay? So I put an ad in the newspaper. Fasting, fastest growing restaurant chain in the country looking for investors. Okay? And the phone rang off the hook. Now, if I was smart and dishonest, I would have raised all the money and left that. <laughs> but, but I ended up raising the money and opening the restaurant, talking the landlord into giving me a, a lease. Okay? And there it was. But I wrote that intention with some help, and I listened to every, every morning, every night. You've got to start with that. And you've got to get crystal clear and then be flexible. The other thing is, and I talked about this when, when I phoned in with you guys or zoomed in or whatever I did, uh, is the way I journal, okay? I start every day journaling with gratitude, asking for wisdom. Heavenly Father is what I refer to my creator. Heavenly Father, and in your case, what can I do to get the money to realize this goal that I'm wanting to create in my life? It's, trust me, I, you know, and when I really got into all the spiritual kind of work, all what I know is about all these spiritual people, they got no money. Okay? <laughs> all right? And so they got great dreams, and, you know, and, and, you know, so after, you know. So, but, 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 but this works, but you got to do the work. You got to do the work. And, and it'll happen. It just happens. And, and if it doesn't, something better will happen. You'll learn something. You know, in every thing, I lost my wife. I mean, you know, there's soulmates and then there's twin flames, okay? And, and we had a very unbelievable connection bond. And I thought that was the worst thing that could ever have happened to me. And the pain was overwhelming. But out of that devastation came a new soul, a new or, or cleaned up soul, a new energy, a new essence, a new desire. Instead of chasing, you know, money and opening more car dealerships, how can I serve? How can I make this world better? You know, how can I make help people to eliminate suffering? Mm -hmm. And so, I, and that's the way it works. There's always my one of my favorite movies was this movie called Silver Lining Playbook or something. Yeah. Out of every tragedy, there's always a silver lining if we will look for it. But so, did I help you with that answer? I hope yeah. maybe. Yeah. How about you? Did you get clear on what I was trying to say? Yes. I. Um Two, well, there's really two questions. One is, what do you consider uh, to be an awakened state? And the second one is, how do you maintain it? So, for me, is when I'm present and conscious and aware and not thinking about the future and not thinking about the past. The past is full of regret, and self-pity, the future can be full of fear. In this moment right now is perfection. And everything is, and this is the beauty of the power of the now book, everything is created in the now. There is no future, there is no past, there is just the now. It's this thing, you know, there's a lot of people who believe there's no time and space, you know, and this is just one big hallucination. I don't know, anything could be possible. But, but I know when I'm present, and aware, I'm there, and I'm free, and I'm at peace. Now, I'm not there a great deal of the time, but when I am there, and so how do you maintain it is the answer, right? Mm -hmm. I really believe this is what, and that's why I'm changing everything about my diet, and my, and because I think, man, I mean, I got, I got injuries, and when they, they, they don't allow you to be there, you know, because you're here. And my shoulder is aching, right? Okay? So this is why we've got to take care of this thing. 
And we've got to take care of this thing. And we've got to get in here. And then we've got to pray, contemplate, meditate, ask. There's a huge, enormous... Man, I wish we could see what's behind us. We live in a frequency, of, and we only have five more minutes, but we live in a frequency of light, which is 1% of all frequencies. There's all kinds of stuff happening right here. There could be a million angels trying to help you stay conscious and get there, okay? But we got to be there. we got to be present, because if you're worried about paying the rent or getting a job or, or fretting over how you did this terrible thing back here, there's no peace in that, okay? And like I said, the worst thing anybody can ever be found guilty of is believing a thought that's not true. Does that, does that help. help a little? Mm -hmm. I hope so. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Um, I just wanted to kind of um, make a statement or um, I'm not sure what it is. But anyways, when you speak of the creation frequency, um, what I've noticed in my work, I work for, um, I have two things I work for. Um, I work for human rights for my people in the Mesquite Coast um, who, whose past can't be in the past because the present, it's still, the past is still part of their present. Right. Um, and uh, what I've noticed mostly with, um, with my work and my research within that and um, sexual liberties is that people in general are hampered by um, the one force or who are um, stigmatized by the one force that creates us all. And um, I was wondering if you would um, address that because um, I do believe that when we go against our own biology, we are at war with ourselves because we're not accepting that which is creation, which is within us. And it's even worse for women, I've noticed, because they're not allowed to in embrace their own sexual beings. Well, you just said a lot of stuff there, and we're out of time. So I'd be happy to talk to you when we're done here, because i got to wrap this up in about three minutes. But let me just say this. There's 7.3 billion people, they tell us, on this thing called Earth. <coughs> I would say a very, very large percentage is suffering unnecessarily. And some of it's because of what others do that they shouldn't be doing. There's the injustice, and there's so much injustice. You have you have thousand people controlling 7.3 billion of us, and they control us through money and medicine and food. Okay, and let me ask you one thing. Does a deer have a mortgage? Does a deer pay for food? Does a deer pay for water? And we're supposed to be the smart ones, okay? I mean, something's wrong. And I'm telling you, something is wrong. And I don't think it's always been like this. But it's shifting. So, yes, life is not fair. It's full of injustice. And the, the sexuality thing is such a mess. Who, no one taught me about sex. Okay, and you know, and we, especially in this country, we're so ridiculous about it, right? Um, and yeah, we got one. We got to wake up, figure out the truth, and teach these young people hmm. from infancy. Okay, and 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 if they're taught love and compassion and how to treat one another, we, we don't need to know algebra and all this other bullshit. Okay? We need to know how to love and be a community and take care of each other, take care of our body, and forget all this bullshit. But it's so, the taxes right now and these armies and these militaries and these suffering is not right. It's terrible. I hate it. What we can do is each of us wake up, learn, move from here to here, feel our way through this, pay attention, be conscious, be aware in a second. Get it. Make that quantum leap as fast as you can hmm. and be free. And in that freedom, we'll find ourselves, we'll find our creator, and we'll find one another, and we'll switch this thing. But it's not going to happen overnight. So we have to be diligent and strong. And I would just like to say in closing, it's been a pleasure to be here. I love your guys' energy, your, your heart, your questions, your smile. Um, and I'm going to... Uh, just leave these books here and you guys do what you want with them. <laughs> I, 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 
I'm not paid to make big decisions like that. <laughs> and uh, I'd be happy to sign them. And uh, I'll stick around for more questions. But I want to respect uh, these wonderful people that have invited me here um, to respect their time and respect your time. But I'm happy to stick around and, and talk as long as you like. Yay. And with Thank that, you so I say, much. Bye. 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 Bye.